<laughs> this gun. Oh my god, this gun. Alright, listen here, you oh, you little shit. Alright, so hey guys, welcome to another Warframe video, and today we're gonna take a quick look at our newest R gun that was introduced with update 24.4 and is the signature weapon of Mrs. Beefcake, aka Hildrin, the Larkspur. Now, first things first, you can get the blueprint for Larkspur from the Tenno Lab in your dojo. And to build a weapon, you have to put in 20,000 credits, 2 Chrisma Toroids, 80 Venerdo Alloy, 5 Radiant Zodian, and 5 Eco Synth Analyzers. Now, the Larkspur is, I think, the first Argon that has the same stats in Atmosphere as it does in Arcwing. And it has two different fire modes. The primary fire fires a rather girthy beam that will shake your screen quite a bit when it's not latched onto anything but as soon as it comes into contact with an enemy the screen shake will stop and the beam will start chaining between enemies doing a stupendous amount of damage. And the secondary fire which you switch into by pressing the secondary fire button uses a charge mechanic that you have to charge all the way and this one fires an explosive ball. Now the ball has travel time but luckily it's pretty fast and it also has punch through though it doesn't seem to punch through terrain, just enemies. So you definitely don't want to hit enemies dead on because in that case it will just punch through them and keep flying whereas if you hit the ground you get a big boom. This is also the fire mode where you have to be a little bit careful because the balls do self damage and quite a lot of it actually so it's very easy to one shot yourself in atmosphere and every now and then in arcwing as well. When it comes to the stats, the primary fire will do 90 damage per damage tick, 80 of which is radiation and only 10 is impact, with a fairly low 10% crit chance and a very below average 1.4 times crit multiplier. The weapon in this mode can also fire up to 12 rounds per second with a 600 round magazine in Arcwing or a 100 round magazine in Atmosphere, with a reload time of 2.5 seconds in Atmosphere or recharge time of 2.5 rounds per second in Arcwing, and it also has a ridiculously high 50% status chance. Now the secondary fire on the other hand will do 1750 damage per shot, 1300 is radiation, 250 is blast and 200 is impact, with a charge time of only 0.5 seconds, a very solid 26% crit chance and a slightly above average 2.2 times crit multiplier, though it does have a slightly lower 34% status chance. And finally, you also get a small bonus with the Larkspur if you call it down with Hildren. So if I call it down with the Naros, I have 100 rounds in the mag with 400 spare rounds. But if I call it down with Mrs. Beefcake, I have 100 rounds in the mag with 700 spare rounds. I also saw some people saying that you get a shorter cooldown on the Argon Deployer when you use it on Hildren. But that doesn't seem to be the case because as you can see, in Naros, 5 minutes, Mrs. Beefcake, 5 minutes as well. Now the setup I ended up using on the Larkspur only requires one format where you add a V and I decided to scale crit even though it doesn't work very well with the primary fire and it's because the explosions from the secondary fire are just hilarious so I use it every now and then. So the mod setup is Rubido Line Barrel for damage, Dual Rants for multi-shot, Parallax Scope for crit chance, Hollowed Bullets for crit damage, then Ammo Chain so I can have this weapon out for as long as possible and I felt okay putting it here because you do have to kill the Profit Taker Orb to get the Charisma Toroids to build the weapon. Then I'm running one dual stat mod which is Hypothermic Shell for cold damage and status chance, I unfortunately don't have the heat one and I have Venomous Clip and Electrified Barrel for corrosive, though of course if you want to fight the Profit Taker you want to beef up that radiation damage so you don't want corrosive there. Now the reason I put in a dual stat mod there is because this weapon is just amazing at stripping away armor in atmosphere. You can see some of these heavy gunners losing all of their armor before they die and it didn't take that long to kill them. This weapon is just ridiculously good at stripping armor. It struggles a little bit versus fossilized infested, so things like ancients because you still have radiation in there which does 75% less damage versus these types of units and on top of that you have cold because once again I don't have the heat based dual stat mod which does 25% less but you know it doesn't take that long to take them down. And the weapon is absolutely hilarious versus large groups of corpus when you put on gas damage because of how much the primary beam chains. It's not that amazing versus singular units, especially when they're beefy units like Corpus Tex, but when they're grouped up, oh my goodness, the gas cloud overlap is ridiculous. And finally, we have the big spoiler where, well, it's not bad, but it's not great either, and I would probably stick to the Imperator. It's better when you get a lucky streak of crits, which you can help by adding critical focus to force more crits when aiming down sides, but it's still not amazing. And that goes for both the primary and the secondary fire. Neither of them are that great, especially since the secondary fire will stagger you every time you fully charge it, which you have to, otherwise you're not gonna fire anything with this weapon. 
It's just not great and this is by the way with me replacing the dual stat mod with a 90% elemental and though once again you could push it a little bit farther by adding crit focus to get more consistent crit, I would still stick to the Imperator. So it's not that great versus the spoiler. How about Arcwing? Well, it's not half bad. It's kind of annoying how it shakes your screen, which is more prevalent in Arcwing because the enemies generally die faster and it's much harder to latch onto them. So get used to the screen shake. And I once again mostly use the primary fire. I don't use the secondary fire that much because it can be pretty hard to hit distant enemies with it since the balls have travel time. So it's mediocre versus the spider, somewhat mediocre in Arcwing. What about standard atmospheric missions? Well, this is where this weapon really shines because this is just hands down the number one arc gun. Because I mucking love this thing, there's nothing better than putting it on Hildren and prancing through the battlefield while screaming Choo Choo motherfuckers, the pain train is arriving at your dead station! It's like a minigun ice Amphrex, it's amazing, I love this, it's just glorious, magnificent, it's just glamorous. <laughs> All the good words, that's what it is. You're doing yourself a disservice if you don't try this in an atmospheric mission. Just imagine you're using the Amprex, just bigger. A lot bigger. That's what this is. And it's amazing. I truly believe the weapon is worth building for that alone. I mean, I don't use it in Arcwing because I prefer the flanctors there. I'm not going to use it against the Spider because I use the Imperator Vandal there. Though once again, you can definitely use it for both of these things as well. But my god, every time I'm in an atmospheric mission, I'm like... Do I have to carry something? No? Oh, engage the Larkspur. And I just go, and it's amazing. I love it. So there you go. That's my quick look at the Larkspur. Not the best for the spider. I don't think it's amazing for Arcwing, but my god, is it fantastic for atmospheric missions. So I thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.